the other half of the summer's project was an experiment involving the east initiative in which we employed six high schoolers involved with the east initiative to collaborate with us the result is an astonishingly detailed model hospital the east island itself is a separate landmass from that which you've already seen this hospital was entirely created by the six teenagers as a direct representation of washington regional hospital which we toured and photographed it contains not only detailed models of hospital furniture but also functional units such as showers toilets sinks computer systems and lab equipment first you see a modeled bathroom that functions similarly to a real one the toilets flush the sinks turn on and off and showers cascade water when the knobs are twisted this is all accomplished through use of the client's particle effects engine which the east collaborators mastered and combined with lsl scripting to create realistic effects the reception desk allows for AI bot receptionists who collect patient check-in information. Next we will walk into the neonatal unit, which as you will see includes modeled infants. These infants can be scripted to cry for food, changing, and attention, and AI nurses can be scripted to respond appropriately. As we traverse the hallways toward the next lab, it is important to remember that all of the signs, decorations, and equipment you see along the way comes directly from real-world equivalents in each area. The equipment lining the shelves in this next lab room corresponds directly to catheters, stents, etc. that we photographed during our tour. The large lab equipment in the middle of the room is a modeled representation of a catheter analysis machine, once again from a photograph. The virtual equipment allows an avatar to lie down, have his or her arteries scanned for blockages, then have the resulting information synced to the patient's records via database interaction. Up next is an intensive care unit. Although we currently have no patients in critical condition, and the rooms do appear a bit empty, you will notice that there is a TV inside of each room. Each of these TVs is tied to a streaming media protocol as well as offering a remote control. This allows patients to watch actual streamed videos as well as power on and off the television and change channels. This serves a dual purpose of providing realism while allowing information to be broadcast to hospital visitors in an intriguing way. Up next is the first of the equipment supply rooms. A garage door slides open, allowing trucks the ability to back up directly into the room. Boxes of supplies can then be unloaded and stocked in the room, awaiting the need for more equipment. Each of these boxes was again textured to match actual medical supply boxes. Up next is a centrally located individual equipment stockroom. In this room are large amounts of individually tagged objects which can quickly be located and snagged by nurses as needed. An RFID scanner at the door is capable of recording when items enter and leave the room, thus keeping real-time inventory tracking accurate as well as billing proper patients for the use of each item. The following room contains a first-generation x-ray machine which avatars can stand on to receive x-ray analysis. The room across the hall contains an MRI machine that is capable of sliding a patient inside, performing its job, and then sliding the patient back out. This process can be automated to a large degree, syncing the results with the patient's record via scanning the patient's RFID tag. The next room is the full catheter room, complete with a desktop computer terminal and buttons for raising and lowering the machinery into place. The computer terminal is interactive and functional, as are all of its drawers and cabinets. The computer setup is used to view radioactive dye spreading throughout a patient's circulatory system in a user-controlled manner. This allows a doctor the ability to diagnose arterial blockages. The resulting video can then be stored in a related database corresponding to the patient and retrievable from any computer on the network. We will now see the catheter machinery in action. A prepped patient enters and lies on the table. From there, a nurse pushes the activation buttons to lower the machinery into place. Once the analysis of the patient is complete, the scenario ends and the patient is able to exit the room. Doctors can then study the resulting video and successfully diagnose the patient. The next scenario showcases a full emergency chain. It begins with an unlucky man being hit by a speeding car. An emergency worker receives notification of the accident and hops into an ambulance with the option of utilizing an air rescue helicopter which will be shown later. This ambulance is then driven to the scene of the accident. From here, the rear doors pop open and the injured man is loaded into the ambulance. Once the man is collected by the ambulance, he can be stabilized and given a personalized RFID tag for hospital use. Once the patient has been admitted to the hospital, we see him lying in an operational hospital bed.
We will now take a look at the East Initiative's object warehouse. Because the kids created such a wide variety of objects, they had to build a large warehouse to store and manage their items. After a fairly complicated first few days learning to set proper permissions, the developers began stockpiling one copyable instance of every object created inside the warehouse. This allowed other people full access to utilize, copy, and improve every item at any time. If you look closely as we walk through the warehouse, you will see medical equipment mixed in with everything from guitars to gazebos and even a huge flying cat in a hat. Once the first of the East avatars turns 18 years old, these items will be able to be transferred via inventory to the main grid's project. They will then be available for implementation on both islands, as well as remaining fully editable and upgradable as functionality is added to each. The next scenario is a separate use case. Due to Second Life's integrated voice chat and media streaming capabilities, it is becoming an ever more popular method of hosting online classes. Many institutions, including Harvard and MIT, have recently begun offering classes taught from entirely within Second Life. This allows a virtual meeting where a professor can lecture as normal, even integrate PowerPoint slides and videos, while offering students real-time voice communication and the ability to record the entire class to their hard drive in a video format for later study. This is the classroom that our East workers have developed.